Hello there, my name is Samantha Biffle and I'm Programs Coordinator here at PPHM and today is Throwback Thursday. So we're going to talk about something old school. We're going to talk about electric cars, which is probably a little surprising. That probably doesn't seem super old school to you, but this is a 1916 Detroit electric model 66 Rugum. Hopefully I said that right. Would have cost you $2,275, so $2,275, which is over $50,000 in today's money. So Detroit electric cars were manufactured by a few different companies from 1907 all the way up until 1938. So you may not have known that electric cars did used to exist, but gas-powered automobiles kind of took over. So why did that happen? Electric cars, based on the price I just told you, kind of indicates they were really popular for wealthy people. They were just more expensive to produce. So one factor that led to their decline was the mass production by Henry Ford. Um, it just made making gas-powered automobiles so efficient that it was really inexpensive. Therefore, prices were lower. The oil boom in the state of Texas also contributed to that because gas was really affordable then. Um, and still is, technically speaking, um, you know, the U.S. is really rich in gasoline resources, oil resources. Longer distances were also desired as people started to have a little bit more freedom of travel. And this model behind me can only go about 65 to 100 miles before it would need to be charged up again. And its top speed was 21 miles per hour. So not very fast. So, gasoline-powered cars just happened to outperform electric in most ways during this time period, but can you imagine if they hadn't? I guess Tesla wouldn't seem so innovative now. It might not even exist. I mentioned early, earlier that these appealed to the wealthy, right? So let's talk about the owner of this particular car. His name was Dr. Joseph Albert Nunn, and he bought this car in 1916. That same year, he acquired full ownership of the Amarillo Daily News, and he drove it until 1930, which is quite a while when you think about it. Dr. Nunn also owned the Amarillo Telephone Company at one time, and he served on multiple university boards in the area. You can actually see this exact car parked outside of his home near 16th and Polk Street in Amarillo in a photo in the exhibition. And you might notice it might look a little familiar to you if you've ever been to the Harrington House, which is another historic home on Polk Street. Um, he's the next door neighbors to the Harrington House and his house still stands there today. So if you take a drive down South Polk and Amarillo, it's kind of like traveling through time. Truly a throwback. While electric cars might not seem old school by Panhandle standards, they really are. I hope you learned something new today and thanks for listening. Stay curious.